السلام عليكم ورحمة الله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ما يهده الله فلا مضل له وما يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم وما يتع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما وألا وإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار Today is the 30th of Jumada Athani 1442 years of the Hijrah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, which coincides with February 12, 2021. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, my brothers and sisters. Tonight we are going to talk about the promise Mahdi, which is one of the major signs of the Day of Judgment. Uh, we have spoken about the signs of the Day of Judgment previously also, and you can find those classes about the Jal, about the Nuzuli Isa ibn Maryam, we have also spoken about the Ajuj and Wa'juj and also the uh, uh, the character who was known as Ibn Sayyad and what is his connection with the, the, the story of the Dajjal. All of this is mentioned in several, several classes. You can find them in our YouTube channel, Knowledge, of, Knowledge for Friends group, inshallah. Also, they are posted in the, uh, the Facebook of Masjid Ibrahim. So you can access them, inshallah, ta'ala, and... Uh, 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 benefit from them if uh, you have not already done so. Today the topic is about the famous uh, uh, character that's going to appear before the Day of Judgment who is known as Al-Mahdi. Who is this Mahdi? Any matters of the religion, whether it is a matter of the past or matter of the future, as long as the Prophet ﷺ mentioned it, it is from the Umur al matters of the unseen. And the only way we can access in our time, until the Day of Judgment, after the Prophet ﷺ left, is through the books of the Hadith. Through the books of the Hadith, uh, we need to search the information from the Qur'an or the Sunnah or the books of the Hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. This is where the information of Al-Islam is preserved with something called the chain of narration. The, 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 the process through which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has preserved the Quran and the process through which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has preserved the Sunnah. So the story of the Mahdi is, if you want to know the real story, there is no exception to this methodology. Those people who do not follow this tariqah, this way, the Sunni way, the Halu Sunnah way, the Prophet's way, the Sahaba's way, for them, these characters have so many different versions. Each of the groups, they came up with their own definition and own character of Mahdi. I'm going to mention some of them today. It's not limited to these personalities, many more. But for example, this person, Muhammad Janpuri, who is the founder of the Mahdaviya sect, his followers claim that he is the Mahdi. For example, the personality Sayyid Ibn Muhammad, who is the founder of the Babism. The, the, this is a firqa, this is a group, the Babism. Uh, uh, he also claimed to be the Mahdi. First he claimed that he was the messenger of God, then later on his followers downgraded him to Al-Mahdi. Similarly, Muhammad Ahmed, the person, the personality in Sudan, who basically established the Mahdist state of Sudan uh, from 1844 to 1885 is his uh, 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 lifespan. Uh, he also claimed to be the Mahdi, and he is he was from the followers of the Samaniya Tariqa, uh, from the the Sufi sects. 
Similarly, Mirza Ghulam Ahmed Qadian, who is the founder of the Qadianis or the Ahmadi sect, those who are known as the Ahmadiyya or the Qadianiyya, these people, they also claim that Mirza Ghulam Ahmed Qadian, first of all, he claimed that he is, he is the Jesus. He is Isa ibn Maryam. He survived the crucifixion and later on, he basically claimed that he is the Mahdi and all sorts of khurafat. False story. Similarly, uh, Riyaz Ahmed Gohar Shahi, from 1941 until his disappearance to 2001. This is the followers of the Sufi sect who is known as the Messiah Foundation International. All of this information you will find in the historical facts. These, all these people, uh, they claim that they are the Mahdi. The most famous amongst the quote-unquote Sunni circle, of course, if somebody acts like this, even if he claims a million times he's a Sunni, he's not a Sunni. He's a Bidai. He's a person of Bida. Okay, the one who is known as Muhammad ibn Abdullah al-Qahtani. Muhammad ibn Abdullah al-Qahtani. His brother-in-law, the famous, infamous, Juhayman al utaybi uh, uh, he basically declared that this person, Muhammad ibn Abdullah, is the Mahdi. And Juhayman al utaybi as you know, uh, in 1980s, he basically seized the Kaaba. And they had to, uh, you know, send the army. And there, was a lot of, there were a lot of killing that happened. And he was finally captured and his followers were captured and persecuted. Up till today there are people who claim that Juhayman al utaybi is such and such and Muhammad ibn Abdullah al Qahtani is the Mahdi. All of these are the people who have uh, tried to follow the path of Iblis from the Talbis Iblis or from the deception of the devil that landed them in this uh, uh, you know, clear misguidance. But the confusion or the dispute doesn't end here. There is other group, other, other part, who claim, a group of people, they claim that all the hadith regarding Mahdi are fabricated and false and nothing authentic from the Prophet Then there is another group who claim that these are the stories of the Mahdi is from the Israeliyat or the fabricated stories of the Jews and the Christians. Then there are those who claim that the story of Mahdi and Isa ibn Maryam, it's metaphoric. And the story of Dajjal and Yajuj Ma'juj is metaphoric. What do they mean by metaphoric? They mean, they say that Mahdi and Isa ibn Maryam, these are not real personalities. It is just the state of the Ummah. They'll be in good. And Dajjal and Yajuj Ma'juj, these are not real, metaphoric. They, that means Dajjal and Yajuj Ma'juj means bad time. So Isa and Mahdi means good time, Dajjal and Yajuj and Majuj means bad time. For sure these explanations are not from the scholars of Ahl Sunnah, from the people of the Bid'ah, those who want to dream, hallucinate and imagine things and then after a while they are so proud of their hallucination and imagination that they write it and they call people to this and they say this is from Allah. As Allah Ta'ala says, فَوَيْلُلْ لِلَّذِينَ يَكْتُبُونَ الْكِتَابَ بِعَيْدِيهِمْ Woe be to those who write things from their, with their own hand. يقولون, then they say, هذا من عند الله. This is from Allah. لِيَشْتَرُوا بِهِ ثَمَنًا قَلِيلًا to, to gain a mere gain. This verse in Surah Al-Baqarah is of course revealed for the Jews and the Christians, but بِلَا شَكْوَ بِلَا رَيْبِ Without any doubt, without any dispute, this applies to all of those people who follow this methodology until the Day of Judgment i.e. are influenced by the methodology of the Jews and the Christians, i.e. they hallucinate and they imagine things and then they claim that their hallucination and imagination is basically revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, this is revelation, but not from Allah. This is the revelation from Iblis. Then there are those who uh, falsely claim to be Mahdi, as you have seen some of these examples, we have already mentioned that. Then there are those who say that Mahdi is Nobody but Isa ibn Maryam. And this is because there is a hadith attributed to the Prophet which says, La Mahdi illa Isa ibn Maryam. There is no Mahdi except it is Isa ibn Maryam. But this hadith is not authentic. This hadith is da'if, weak, very weak, not attributed to the Prophet. And we are going to talk about the word Al Mahdi 
very soon inshallah tala what it, what it means and so on and so forth then there are those who say that mahdi has already appeared because of the hadith in sunan ibn majah and other books of hadith which is also not an authentic hadith but let me read to you the meaning of which is the prophet sallallahu supposedly said but he didn't say this is not attributed it cannot be attributed because it is a false narration anyway the narration says reported by thawban maula rasulillah sallallahu alaihi wasallam the Prophet Sallam supposedly said, Three will fight one another for your treasure, each one of them the son of a Khalifa, but none of them will gain it. Then the black banners will come from the east. Hmm? Rayati Sud, the black banners. So anytime you hear people coming with black banners, oh, people think it's Mahdi. First of all, this black banner has nothing to do with Mahdi because there is no narration which says Mahdi will come with black banner. Anyway, but this is where the confusion comes. If we don't separate the right information from the wrong information, we are going to be filled up with confusion. Then the narration says, and they will kill you in an unprecedented manner. Then he mentioned something that I don't remember. Then he said, when you see them, then pledge your allegiance to them, even if you have to crawl over the snow. For that is the Khalifatullah al-Mahdi. This because that is the Khalifa of Allah al-Mahdi. So some of the historians they say that this was a governor who was appointed by the Dawlatul Abbasiyah, the Abbasids, and they claim that he is the Mahdi. Is this true for sure or not? First of all, the narration is unauthentic, and even if the person was righteous, who was appointed by al the, the Abbasids, doesn't mean that he is the Mahdi. Who was promised who is who is uh, uh, promised to be coming before the day of judgment also some of the people they say Ab, Ab, uh, Mahdi is from the children of Abbas ibn Abdul Muttalib and of course we know that the Shias they have their own version and own Khurafat own stories with regards to Mahdi the 12 verse they claim some of the groups they claim that this personality called Muhammad ibn al Hassan al Askari he is the twelfth. He is the son of the eleventh Imam. He is the twelfth one. He disappeared in a place in Samara. Samara is a very famous town in Al Iraq. Many of the ulama of Hadith are from that town. As Samira, a very famous one in the recent is Sheikh Al Allama Subhi Hassan As Samira, the one who just passed away a few years ago. Rahim Allah Taala. And many scholars came from that land. However. Uh, anyway, they 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 they, they uh, attribute that Al Hasan Al Askari, Muhammad Ibn Hasan Al Askari, he disappeared in a very in a tunnel in in one of the caves in 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 uh, Samara, and before the day of judgment, he will come back and he will raise Abu Bakr and Umar Ibn Al Khattab radiyallahu anhum from the grave, and he will punish them for their uh, disobedience and their khiana and their uh, treachery against the Sunnah of the Prophet. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as we know the Shias, they claim so many things against a Sahabat Al-Kiram, Ridwanullahi Ajma'een, and of course they have their own version of Mahdi too. What is the solution of all of these things? Solution of all of these dandana and all of these hallucination and imagination and lies is very simple. Follow the Sunni tradition. Follow the Sunni. Sunni means whatever the Prophet and the Sahaba established, the, sun, the Sunnah way, which is what our ulama from day one until today and until the day of judgment, they'll do this. Until the time that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wish this goodness to remain, Ta'ifatim Mansura, they will do this, which is first, they collect all the text from the Quran and the Sunnah. And this could even include the unauthentic and fabricated information, all information. Then, they distinguish what information is authentic, what information is unauthentic. This is the second most important aspect of the Sunni Tariq. Third, they explain these authentic traditions so that people know the right interpretation of all of this hadith, which are authentically attributed to the Prophet. Fourth, they also look at the explanation of the great Imams who came before them. Mathalan, if today a Sunni alim, like today we will see one of the great alim, many of the ulama today, they have made bahad, 
uh, you know their their own research and one of the very good wa work is b done by the muhaddith of al-madina who is still alive one of the great scholar of hadith and great mashaykh of the ahl sunnah sheikh abdul muhsin al-abbad hafizahullah ta'ala he has one of the very beneficial research work done years ago and he gave a lecture in al-madina al-munawwara if i'm not wrong whether it's a lecture but it was published in the magazine of Madina University which has the uh, introduction of Sheikh Ibn Baz rahimahullah ta'ala at that time very beneficial work so these Imams when they make the research after they collect all the hadith and make sure which is authentic from which is weak then they look at the explanation of the Ahlul Sunnah Imam who came before us they study thoroughly their books and they understand their explanations then after this explanation they figure out which information or which explanation is closest to what is being attributed to the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam so this research work is ex extensive commoners cannot do that of course but commoners should not be detached from this commoners should be connected to this so that they can recognize what is the truth and what is the falsehood we have this big gap of people thinking that i am a common muslim commoner i'm from the commoners i don't need to know these things well no you have to know these things otherwise you'll not be able to distinguish so when we why do we talk about ilm of hadith mustalai al hadith we're talking about if you know uh, the tradition of this how the sunnah was preserved why this is because the commoners need to know this methodology so when they are said a hadith is sahih or a hadith is da'if or a hadith is mawdu fabricated they understand the language they are not all confused say, what do you mean by this because there are some commoners if you tell a hadith is weak they, are, they get angry why are you getting angry because they said that you are telling me that the prophet sallam said something weak no everything the prophet sallam said is strong we say that's true but that's not what this means when we say hadith is weak, it doesn't mean we are saying the Prophet said something weak. We are saying that this is a lie attributed to the Prophet Meaning who? The scholars of the hadith and so on and so forth. So it is important for the, the, the commoners to recognize this science, study this. Not in depth, of course, they cannot, but at least to the extent that they would be able to understand the hadith and the ayat when it is explained to them. Because Mahdi is... Our Imam is going to appear. If we don't see him, if our children don't get to see him, maybe their children's children will see them. But that information has to be passed down to them. It will not pass to them unless we learn it and we teach it to them. And so on and so forth. So this is the Sunni Tariqah with which we will be able to see the truth as the truth and falsehood as the falsehood. Before we go into the details, we have the obligation to understand the matter of the unseen and learn it and keep it as it is. If a matter of unseen, a matter of the religion, is described in just one ayah of the Quran and there is no other proof or just one hadith, authentic, it is mentioned in that hadith, it is wajib, it is obligatory for all the Muslims to believe in it. Why? Because it is from Allah. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Ali Imran, ذَلِكَ مِنْ أَنْبَاءِ الْغَيْبِ نُوحِيهِ إِلَيْكِ This is from the news of the unseen which we reveal to you, O Muhammad. News of the unseen. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Ma'idah, verse number 5, وَمَنْ يَكْفُرْ بِالْإِيمَانِ The one who disbelieves in the faith, فَقَدْ حَبِطَ عَمَلُهُ then all of his deeds will be nullified. And he will be from in the hereafter from those who are the losers. And Imam Tabari, Imam Jarir al Tabari, the great Mufassir of the Quran, he mentions in his tafsir. And whoever denies the faith, Umayyakfur bil Iman means anyone who rejects what Allah commands to believe in, like the Tawheed, the oneness of Allah the prophethood of the Prophet and whatever else that our Prophet brought from Allah which is the faith that Allah said about i.e. if you deny it 
huh? your deeds will be nullified. Saying that the rewards of his deeds that he used to do in this life while hoping to reach as a result a position with Allah will be invalid. And in the hereafter he will be among the destroyed and the deprived and who uh, uh, destroyed who deprive themselves their share of the reward of Allah because of their disbelief in Muhammad Sallallahu and working out of the obedience of Allah. So Imam Jari al-Tabari in this explanation he is saying that anything and everything as long as it is the it comes from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam a believer he believer who truly believes in Allah and his messenger has no authority to deny it no authority to deny it why we are saying this because as you have seen that so many of the firqa and the groups and personalities they have denied al-mahdi and al-mahdi is from the matter of unseen he cannot be denied and denying him is kufr disbelief as we see from the ayat of the quran uh, how many sahaba reported the story of mahdi how many sahaba first of all the ulama of the hadith, they say there are dozens of hadith and some of them counted to be more than 50 hadith with regards to the Sha'an al-Mahdi, the matter of al-Mahdi. And uh, Sheikh Abdul Muhsin al-Abbad, Hafidahullah, in his very uh, important work which is uh, titled as, let me read you the title, Aqidatu Ahl Sunnah Wal Athar Fil Mahdi al Muntazira. The Aqidah of the Sunnah and the people of the Athar with regards to the uh, uh, awaited Al-Mahdi. This is, you can find this book, you can download it online and you can benefit from it. I do not know if any translation there is, but the work is in Arabic, inshallah. He, uh, he said in his research that when he counted all the Hadith, he counted to be there are 26 Sahaba. 26 Sahaba and he mentions all of them. From them, Uthman, Ali, Talha, Abdurrahman ibn Awf, Al Hussein ibn Ali, Umm Salama, Umm Habiba, Ibn Abbas, Ibn Mas'ud, Ibn Umar, Ibn Amr, Abdullah ibn Amr, Abu Sa'id al Khudri, Jabir ibn Abdullah, Abu Huraira, Anas ibn Malik, Ammar ibn Yasir, Awf ibn Malik, Thawban, Mawla Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and so on and so forth. 26 of them he mentions. There could be more or less than this, but this is what this Imam he has reported. Out of this 26, for sure, these are the Sahaba, their hadith are authentic. And they are Jabir ibn Abdullah, and we are going to see their hadith today. Abu Sa'id al Khudri, Abu Huraira, Umm Salama, our mother, Ali ibn Abi Talib, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, Imran ibn Hussein. These eight of them are for sure, their narrations are authentic. Then uh, Sheikh Abdul Muhsin al Abbad, he refers to the ulama who considers that the narrations of Mahdi has reached the Mutawatir. Tawatur, meaning it is so much being reported that it cannot be untrue. Now, doesn't matter whether a hadith is mutawatir or the hadith is ahad, as long as the hadith is authentic, even if there is only one hadith with only one chain, then we accept the truthfulness of that hadith. We do not need a mutawatir narration. But we have from the ulama of the past, including in our time, many of them, they have, after studying all the hadith, they say, on top of this hadith being authentic, this hadith had reached to Tawatur. So how could you deny them? And who, those of the ulama who have considered the narrations of Al-Mahdi to be Mutawatir, Imam Abdul, Sheikh Abdul Muhsin Al-Abbad, he says, they are Abu Bakr ibn Abi Khaythama, Hafiz Abu Nu'aym, Al-Amir Muhammad ibn Ismail al-Sanani, in the daughter of Subul al-Salam, Imam ibn Kathir rahimahullah ta'ala, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm reading from the long, uh, wrong group. Okay, these scholars are uh, Imam As-Sijizi, uh, As who died in the year 336 Hijri, Imam Al-Barzanji, who died in the year 1103 Hijri, Imam As-Safarini Al-Hambali, who died in the year 1188, and Imam As-Safarini Al-Hambali, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, one of the great ulama of the Hadith and Fiqh, he has a poetry, he wrote, which is referred to as Ad-Dura al-Mudiyya fi aqd ahli al-firqa ahli ahli al-firqa til mardiyya. The illuminated pearls with regards to the aqidah of the 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 sect who are pleased or the happy sect or the sect which are pleased with Allah subhanahu wa taala. And this is known as the aqidah of a safarini, which is being taught by many of the ulama 
of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jamaah, including there is an explanation of Sheikh Ibn Uthaymin rahimahullah ta'ala with regards to this. In this poetry he says, Imam Safarini, and this poetry has almost 200 something lines, which, which uh, 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 you know, uh, summarizes the aqid of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jamaah. He says, وَمَا أَتَى وَمَا أَتَى فِي النَّصِّ فِي أَشْرَاتِ and whatever comes in the text with regards to the signs of the Day of Judgment, فَكُلُّهُ حَقٌّ بِلَا شِطَاتِ All of them are true without any doubt. مِنْهَا imam al الْخَاتِمُ الْفَصِيحِ And from these signs of the Day of Judgment is the Imam, the leader, the seal, and the Fasih. Fasih means the one who is eloquent, Muhammadun. He is talking about Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Al-Mahdi. And now he's talking about Al-Mahdi, Wal Masihu, and the Masih, meaning Masih ibn Maryam. So he's saying that these are the three signs of the Day of Judgment. Muhammad ibn Abdullah, the Prophet said, I am the Day of Judgment came like this, as we know from the authentic hadith, Al-Mahdi and Wal Masih. And after mentioning the Ashrati Sa'a, at the end he says in uh, verse number 114, he says, akhbaru, And all of these informations are authentic, their reports are authenticated, وَسَطَّرَهَا أَثَارَهَا الْأَخْيَارُ And the righteous people, the chosen people, they have written down their information in the sutur, in the books. A Safarini also, Imam Safarini also claimed that the hadith of Al-Mahdi reached to be mutawati. From those ulama of the Ahlul Sunnah, the Ahlul Hadith who considered the hadith of Mahdi to be mutawati is the great Imam Nawab Siddiq Hasan Khan. He is who, who was married to the Queen of Bhopal in India and a very famous alim from the ulama of Ahl al Hadith, Nawab Siddiq Hasan Khan, Muhaddith uh, of his time. He died in the year 1307 Hijri, very recently. And the most, one of the most recent, Muhammad ibn Jafar al Kittani, Imam al Kittani al Maghribi from Al Fas, from the mm. Fez, the mm. town of Fez mm. in Morocco. Mm. He died in the year 1345 Hijri. These are the ulama of the Nubala of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. They considered this hadith to be the hadith of Al Mahdi to be mutawatir. Then Imam uh, uh, Sheikh Abdul Mosin al Abbad also mentions the ulama of the hadith. Those ulama they have reported the book, the, the hadith of Al Mahdi, and he counted to be 36 scholars. And these are just talking about the main musnad. The Sahih, the Siha, the Masanid, the Tariq, the Mu'jam, for example, Imam Abu Dawud in his Sunan, Imam Ibn Majah in his Sunan, Imam Tirmidhi in his Sunan, Imam Nasai in his Sunan, Imam Ahmed in his Musnad, Imam Hibban in his Sahih, Imam Hakim in his Mustadrak, Imam Ibn Abi, uh, 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 Ibn, Ibn Abi Shayba in his Musannaf, Al Tabarani in his Mu'jam, Ibn Al Bazzar in his, uh, uh, in, in his Musnad, Abu Ya'la in his Musnad, and he counts all the 36 names that he could collect there could be more than that then after that also he mentions the ulama of the, the the great ulama in the past they separately wrote books for al mahdi and he mentions some of them like abu bakr ibn abi khaytama this is the uh, i was i was reading you the wrong this is the one abu bakr ibn abi khaytama al hafiz abu nuaim uh, al amir muhammad ibn ismail al sanani the author of subuli salam imam ibn kathir rahimahullah ta'ala al suyuti Imam Suyuti, Jalaluddin Suyuti, and also, of course, Imam Al Nawab Siddiq Hassan Khan, Rahimahullah Ta'ala Al Jami. These are the great ulama, those who did so much work so that the commoners from the Ahlul Sunnah they should have no doubt and they should not be confused or derailed by the people of the Bid'ah or the people, those who are full of desires in their heart and they'll be protected from following the path of Iblis. <coughs> After this discussion, my brothers and sisters, we should know that it is a consensus. It is a consensus amongst the ulama of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah that belief in Al Mahdi has to be the part of the aqid of Ahlul Sunnah. Consensus. And Sheikh uh, uh, Abdul Mohsin al Abbad he mentions that when he researched this topic, he did not find any great alim from the ulama of the hadith or the ulama of the fiqh. Any Sunni ulama, the great ones, they have questioned Al Mahdi. Nobody. And then he mentions some of the personalities in the history, like Ibn Khaldun and Abu Al Al Maududi in his book Al Bayanat, they have mentioned certain confusion with regards to Al Mahdi, and he 
clarifies all of this in his great, the, the beneficial work that I just mentioned to you. You can go to that book, page 55 to 64. Sheikh Abdul Muhsin al Abbad, he clarifies the confusion of Ibn Khaldun, Abdul Rahman Ibn Khaldun al Maghribi, the great uh, 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 Mu'arikh, the historian. He mentions certain things with regards to al Mahdi, which is confusing. And similarly, Abu Lal al Maududi, the famous, uh, uh, you know, the, the leader of uh, 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 the, you know, the political movement in uh, India, Pakistan, and Bangladesh. Uh, 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 he also in his book Al Bayanat has brought some confusion, some arguments which people, if they read it, they might uh, be you know influenced to think that Al Mahdi, uh, believing in Al Mahdi, is not important. This is something that he referred to in his books, and may Allah Subhanahu wa Taala forgive them. But we have Alhamdulillah, ulama fa'alu sunnah wal jama they clarify these mistakes and they you know. Uh, write down treaties for us to remove those confusions inshallah ta'ala the hadith that are regarded with regards to al-mahdi are several categories some of them are sahih and hasan and they are directly mentioning al-mahdi those are the narrations that we are going to look at today then there are narrations which are authentic that talks about the time imam mahdi will be there for example the story of Yajuj Majuj, the story of Dajjal, the story of Nuzuli Isa ibn Maryam. There are details there that refers to the time of Al-Mahdi. But those narrations, they don't have any explicit mention of Al-Mahdi. So that's why we will not mention those information today. Why? Because, first of all, when we go to the books of the Hadith and the books of the Ulama, they talk about Al-Mahdi, they don't enclose those narrations. They do not include those narrations because the matter of the Ghaibiyyah, we have to keep it as it is. So this is one of the reasons. Then there are authentic narrations which some of the people by mistake thought that it is Al-Mahdi. But there is no reference to say it is Al-Mahdi. And we are going to mention one of the hadith today, inshallah, at the end of the top, the discussion today, if we have time. If you have time, we're going to talk about this because these are sometimes referred to by people and said by people and we are just copying it from them. But we are not realizing as we are not speaking the truth. By that we will be establishing falsehood about this great honorable character Al-Mahdi. And then of course there are weak and fabricated narrations. Weak and fabricated narrations describing Al-Mahdi, his description and so on and so forth. And these are for sure not to be paid any attention to. Now here is the trick. If you know the authentic reports, can you put it down? If you know the authentic reports, Alhamdulillah, then you know anything other than that comes from other other stories, it will be clear to you. For example, there is about, as you will see today, a dozen narration. It's not that impo that that uh, difficult to remember these these uh, you know. Uh, pointers about Al-Mahdi. Anything other than that comes, now you will figure it out that these are coming most likely from unverified sources. This is one of the easy way for the commoners to remember a certain topic, whether it is Mahdi or Isa or Muhammad Sallallahu or anybody. Uh, before we go to the Hadith of the Mahdi, uh, the Hadith of, regarding Imam, uh, Imam Mahdi Rahimahullah uh, Alayhi Salam, what is the definition? What is Al-Mahdi? Mahdi means the one who is guided. Al-Mahdi is not his name. Al-Mahdi is a description. Al-Mahdi is his title. Like Al-Masih is the title of Isa ibn Maryam. It is not his name. Al-Mahdi basically means linguistically the one who is guided. So is there other guided people other than Al-Mahdi? For sure. For example, we have the famous hadith of Arbad ibn Sariya radiallahu anhu, which is reported by Imam Tirmidhi and Abu Dawud. Another famous hadith, the person one day he gave this sermon and everybody cried and wept and they said, the Prophet of Allah, it's as if you are giving us a final, uh, 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 you know, talk, give us your advice. So the Prophet Sassam, he said, he said, fa inna, well, some of the things that he mentioned, I'm going to just quote that part. فَإِنَّهُ مَا يَعِشْ مِنْكُمْ فَسَيَرَى إِخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا he, he said to the companions, those of you who will live longer, they will see a lot of dispute. فَعَلَيْكُمْ بِسُنَّتِي So for you to follow my sunnah, وَسُنَّةِ الْخُلَفَاءِ الرَّاشِدِينَ الْمَهْدِيِينَ And the sunnah of the Khulafa al-Rashidin. 
the rightly guided al mahdiyin al mahdiyin plural of al mahdi so abu bakr is from al mahdi umar ibn khattab is a mahdi al mahdi meaning like they are rightly guided so are they al from the rightly guided people for sure in fact they are better than al mahdi who will come before the day of judgment for sure without any doubt because they are the best in the nation from the sahaba al kiram radwanullahi ajma'in so then there are other people who can be technically or linguistically called al mahdi but the mahdi whom the prophet and prophesized is the specific character who will come before the day of judgment now we do also know that prophet isa ibn maryam will come down isn't he one of the rightly guided for sure he is one of the rightly guided in fact he is better than al mahdi why because he is the messenger of allah ruhullah kalima of allah alqaha ila maryam and he was supported by ruh al qudus and he will come down putting his hands on the wings of the angels as we know from the authentic narration and his shan has his uh, status no doubt is better than al mahdi for sure and is he not also guided yes he is guided but he is not al not not da mahdi da mahdi is who in the sunni tradition when we go into the hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam we know that al mahdi will come from the family of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam specifically from the children of fatima radiyallahu anha and he will have a normal birth his name will be the same as the name of our prophet his father's name will be the name of our father's prophet so according to this narration his name would be muhammad ibn abdullah because this is what our prophet's name is now there are some narration which says his mother's name will be amina is it true there is no authentic report with regard to his mother's name only we know as we will see because we are going to read this hadith to you so you will hear it with your own ears inshallah taala that these are narrations spoken from the mouth of the one mayantiqu anil hawa he didn't speak from his desires muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam so mahdi will not be a a person who will be in good stature how do we know because the prophet sallam said allah will prepare him in a night in one night allah will prepare him so he will be rightly guided in one night this is from the miracle of allah allah can do whatever he wishes and then he will lead the people and there will be lot of goodness lot of justice and goodness in his time and he will be the leader for the muslims when sayyidina isa ibn maryam will come down and we will see from the authentic hadith that he will be the one who will lead prophet isa ibn maryam in the prayer and he will be with the taifatin mansura the victorious group who will support the killing and the fighting against the dajjal and will support sayyidina isa ibn maryam alayhi salam against the dajjal but then we do not know when he will be exactly born and we do not also know when he will die but the span of his rulership the prophet asam said it would be around 7 to 8 years 7 to 8 years there is some description the prophet asam said his forehead would be white and his nose would be thin and there's a bump here on his nose i remember uh, in i think it's 1999 we had a seminar in new york and sheikh uh, musa nasr rahimahullah one of the students of sheikh al albani he was the one who was giving us the class of al mahdi and he was i still remember that i don't remember all the details but i do remember he showed with his finger the and he rubbed on his nose to show that there would be a bump on the nose of mahdi alayhi salam anyway i mean this is some of the things that when our teachers teach us for a reason um, it kind of etches in our heart and we remember it really well all of these are of course from the authentic report of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam al mahdi is one of the mujaddid one of the ones who will revive the deen in his time scholar of course leader mujaddid from the family of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam but he is not better than abu bakr umar uthman ali and the sahaba and he is not better than of course 
Sayyidina Isa ibn Maryam. But then why will he lead in the prayer? This is because you will hear that Prophet Isa will tell him, you lead it. Because you are so and so as the narration will say. This is one of the reasons that he will lead the great Prophet and Messenger of Allah, Isa ibn Maryam. And one of the ways that Isa ibn Maryam shows the, that the Prophet Muhammad sallam's Sharia will be there until the Day of Judgment is through this. That he will come and he will pray behind one of his followers. Being one of his followers, yes, he is a prophet, yes, he is a messenger. But when he will come back, he will follow, of course, the Quran and the Sunnah of our Prophet Sallallahu And he will not judge by Torah and Injil. So he is one of those amazing prophet who knows the message of Torah, the message of Injil. And he will come back and he will, of course, know the message of the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wasallam. So this is, in short, what Mahdi is. Uh, now, the, the tartib of these great signs of the Day of Judgment starts with Mahdi. Then, while Mahdi will be there, there will be Dajjal. Dajjal will appear. And then, while Dajjal and Mahdi is there, and the Muslims are going to fight Dajjal, at that time Sayyidina Isa ibn Maryam will come down. And then they will kill uh, uh, Dajjal, meaning Isa ibn Maryam will kill Dajjal alayhi salam, and Yajuj and Ma'ajuj will come. The reason I'm saying this is because when we are talking about these Ashrati Sa'a, we are not talking in a sequence. So I will put those classes in our section of the videos in a sequence because we have playlist, but you know, course the knowledge teaches us what it is uh, uh, and so on and so forth now let's look into the hadith uh, with regards to al-mahdi every single hundred years there will be a reviver al-mahdi is one of the revivers this we know from the hadith in sunani abi daud and others authenticated by imam al-albani and sheikh mubil ibn hadi al wadi and other great ulama of the hadith the, author, the hadith of Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu An Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Inna Allah yaba'athu li hadhihi al-ummati Ala ra'si kulli mi'ati sanatin Man yujaddidu laha deenaha The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Allah will raise for this ummah Meaning the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam At the top of every hundred years The one who will revive its religion for it This is a great glad tidings for the ummah of Muhammad but here is of course you can see now the people of Sunnah they will use this hadith to search the Mujaddid as for the people of the Bida they will use this hadith to support their leader to be the Mujaddid so just because somebody says so and so is a Mujaddid is not he's he's not a Mujaddid Mujaddid one one who revives the religion he doesn't come with something new okay many of these Firqa, they have defined their leader to be Mujaddid. Yes, their leaders are Mujaddid, but not the Mujaddid and Islam, the Mujaddid of Bida. They revived the Bida, they came up with new concept or revived an old concept that was there by one of the people of the Bida in the past. These are not the Mujaddid the Prophet is talking about. The Mujaddid he is talking about is the one who will come and revive the message of Prophet mm -hmm. Muhammad. Mm -hmm. So, we recognize the Mujaddid by their action, by their books, and by the call to. Not we, meaning the scholars. And we call a person a Mujaddid who our ulama of the Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama, they call him as Mujaddid. So for sure Imam Mahdi alayhi salam is one of those who will come and revive the matters of the religion. As you will see from the narration. Now this narration is, this hadith is not specifically for Mahdi. This is general for all Mujaddid, Speci but, but Mahdi is included in it for sure. Is Mahdi reported here? No. But how can we use this Hadith to refer to Mahdi? Because there are other narrations which show what Mahdi will do. Why Al-Mahdi is so special? This is because Allah will prepare him. How will Allah prepare him? With the revelation. Which revelation? New revelation? No. The same old. The Quran and the Sunnah. He will be knowledgeable and then because of his being knowledgeable about the Sharia and implementing the Sharia, there will be a lot of goodness. This is why he is a Mujaddid, for sure. 
then Mahdi will be there leading the Muslims at the time of the descent of Isa ibn Maryam. We have the hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih Muslim. Now here is the thing, Bukhari and Muslim, rahimahullah ta'ala, they did not mention any hadith of al-Mahdi by name. By name. But, as you will see now, the narration that they brought, this is referring to al-Mahdi, for sure. But is there any hadith in Bukhari and Muslim that says about Mahdi clearly with the name? None of them. Well, Ihada, this is one of the reasons one, some of the people they say, since this hadith is not in Bukhari and Muslim, so believing in Al-Mahdi is not important. Of course, this is a wrong conclusion because not all the authentic hadith is in Bukhari and Muslim. Imam Bukhari and Muslim, they themselves, they said that they did not include all hadith authentic that they used to consider to be in their book. Why? Because first of all, they had a certain, certain theme in mind. Based upon that theme, they put the hadith there. Second, they didn't want the book to be too long. So Khulasat al-Qawl, Bukhari and Muslim, Rahimahumullah ta'ala, we are not talking about the Sahib al-Kitab, the one who has compiled the book, they themselves used to believe in many hadith that, is not, that were not there in their book to be authentic. So somebody coming and saying, the issue of Mahdi is not in Bukhari and Muslim, so it is not important to believe in. Is this true? No, it is not true. This is falsehood. First of all, because as we have already mentioned about the, the position of these great, two great Imams, Shaykhain, Bukhari and Muslim. Second, this is a consensus among the Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah scholars that if there is hadith outside Bukhari and Muslim and that hadith is authentic, then accepting that hadith is wajib. This is a consensus amongst all of the ulama of the Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. There is no khilaf about this matter. But why do we explain this? Because there are some people, they bring this confusion and one of them is uh, uh, this confusion in, in, is mentioned in the book Al-Bayanat, as we have mentioned before, by the author uh, uh, Al-Mawdudi, rahimahullah ta'ala. The, the hadith in Bukhari says, on the authority of Abu Hurairah, Qala, Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Kayfa antum idha nazala ibn Maryam afikum, wa imamukum minkum, wa imamukum winkum. How will be your situation when Isa ibn Maryam will come down and your Imam is one of you. Your Imam is one of you. Who is this Imam? This narration of Abu Huraira doesn't mention who the Imam is. Okay? And this is the report in Al-Bukhari. The report in Muslim has another version. The Prophet said, Kaifa antum idha nazala fikum ibn Maryam, the hadith of Abu Huraira, same but with different wording, fa ammakum minkum. فَأَمَّكُمْ مِنْكُمْ How will be your situation when Isa ibn Maryam will come down and he will lead you? Meaning who will lead you? Isa ibn Maryam will lead you. Okay. One of the reporter, Ibn Abi Dhi'ib, who is the, the one who reported from Ibn Shihab, Ibn Shihab al-Zuhri, Muhammad ibn Shihab al-Zuhri, from the Nafi, from Abu Huraira, this hadith. Ibn Abi Dhi'ib was teaching his students. He said, do you understand what it means by Ammakum minkum. How will he lead you? How will he lead you? So his students, and here in the report is Walid ibn Muslim, he said, Why don't you tell us? So he said, Ibn Abidi said, Fa ammakum bi kitabi rabbikum tabaraka wa ta'ala. He will lead you by the book of your Lord. Wa sunnati nabiyyikum sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he will lead you by the sunnah of your Prophet. Who? Sayyidina Isa ibn Maryam. Sayyidina Isa ibn Maryam. But the, the report in Sahih Muslim does not mention who this Imam would be at that time. Then Imam Muslim brings the hadith of Jabir radiallahu anhu. Now we have a hadith of Abu Hurairah, which is authentic in Bukhari and Muslim, talking about the coming of Isa ibn Maryam, and there will be a leader at that time, but we do not know who this leader is. Okay? Now we have the hadith of Jabir. Jabir's narration says that the Prophet said, لا تزالوا طائفة من أمتي يقاتلون على الحق ظاهرين إلى يوم القيامة. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said, a section of my nation will not cease fighting for the truth, meaning they will defend the truth, that they will fight for the truth, they will stand up and always preserve the truth and fight the falsehood. And will they, this group will prevail until the day of judgment. Okay, فقال and then he said. 
fayanzilu Isa ibn Maryam sallallahu alaihi wasallam fayaqulu amiruhum and Isa ibn Maryam will come down and their amir will say meaning the amir of the rightly guided group the ta'ifatu mansura the victorious group their amir their leader will say ta'ala salli bina come lead us in the prayer fayaqul ibn maryam will say sayyidina isa ibn maryam will say la no inna ba'dakum ala ba'din umara'u takrimat allah hadhil umma i will not do that indeed one of you is a leader of the other and this is from the honor of your ummah that allah has given you now this narration of jabir is showing the discussion between the leader of the muslims at that time and sayyidina isa ibn maryam but we do not know who this leader is now we have the narration of jabir in the book of al harith ibn usama this great muhaddith al harith ibn usama is we do not hear their name very often but this great imam has a musnad and in the musnad he has a hadith of jabir radiyallahu anhu with another turuq another chain than the chain of imam muslim and that turuq has the specific information that this amir will be the mahdi let me read it to you an wahab ibn munabbih an jabir qala qala rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam said yanzilu isa ibn maryam isa ibn maryam will come down fayaqulu amiruhum al mahdi and their amir al mahdi will say ta'ala salli bina kam prebitas fayaqulu la inna ba'dakum amiru ba'din takrimatullah li hadhil umma you are imam to one another and this is an honor for your umma from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this narration of jabir which has a another chain in the musnad of al harith ibn abi usama rahimahullah ta'ala has an authentic chain this chain has been authenticated by imam al albani in irwa al ghalil if i am not wrong or maybe in the sahiha and also this has been authenticated before him by other muhaddithun including imam ibn qayyim in his book al manar al munif and sheikh abdul muhsin al abbad hafizahullah ta'ala when he did his research work he brought this hadith in a very uh, enlightening manner to uh, emphasize that we have a proof to show that at that time and say that isa ibn maryam will come down the amir will be mahdi alayhi salam this should be no doubt about this matter because alhamdulillah rabbil alamin this hadith is authentic inshallah then we have the report in musan musanaf ibn abi shayba and uh, the isnad of this has been authenticated by sheikh hasan abdul fattah al barqawi one of our teachers in the kitab al fitan we have the author on the authority of muhammad ibn sirin muhammad ibn sirin a tabi'i qala al mahdi min hadhihi al umma al mahdi will be one of the one of the members of this umma wa huwa alladhi ya ummu isa ibn maryam and he is the one who will lead isa ibn maryam i he is talking about in the prayer and this is of course it is not a hadith it is the statement of muhammad ibn sirin one of the tabi'i and the chain of narration is authentic however we have the hadith clear from the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that he said amiruhum al mahdi their amir at that time will be al mahdi so the pointer over here is first of all there is of course no clear indication clear wording al mahdi in the hadith of sahihain but we know that the hadith of abu huraira and the hadith of jabir when they're talking about isa ibn maryam coming down and their amir will lead the prayer this amir is nobody else except al mahdi so directly his name is not there but indirectly for sure the narration is there so even anybody says mahdi is not mentioned in bukhari and muslim he is not correct he is speaking untrue statements second those people who say first of all they say that bukhari and muslim didn't mention the hadith of mahdi so believing in mahdi is not important as we have mentioned to you that of course this is not also true even if mahdi is not mentioned in the bukhari and muslim so what we have mahdi mentioned in so many other books of sunan and the hadith reach to the level of tawatur mutawatir and even if it is not mutawatir even if it is ahad as long as the narration is authentic no believer in his sane mind could say that believing in al mahdi is not very important 
It should not be wajib for every believers to believe in Al-Mahdi. This statement is from the falsehood and from the confusion and from the ignorance of the person or the, the people who say such things in their books and their and their classes. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive them and guide them to the truth and guide all of us to the right way. Mahdi is a special because he will follow the Quran and Sunnah. That will make him a just leader. And this hadith is reported in the Mustadrak of Imam al-Hakim, al-Hakim al Naisaburi, rahimahullah ta'ala, on the authority of uh, Abu Sa'id al-Khudri radiyallahu anhu. Qala, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, la taqumu sa'atu hatta tumla al-ardu dhulman wa jawran wa udwana. That the day of judgment will not be established until the earth will be filled with transgression, aggression, and tyranny. Tyranny. ثُمَّ يَخْرُجُ مِنْ أَهْلِ بَيْتِ مَنْ يَمْلَأَهَا قِسْطًا وَعَدْلًا كَمَا مُلِئَتْ ظُلْمًا وَعُدْوَانًا Then there will come a person from my house, from my from Bayti, even Ahli Bayt. The one who will fill the earth with, with justice and goodness like it was filled before with transgression and tyranny. This hadith has been authenticated by Imam al-Albani rahimahullah ta'ala and also al-Arna'ud, uh, 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 al uh, Sheikh Mustafa al-Adawi authenticated this narration too in his book Sahih al-Musnad min Ashrati Sa'a. Al-Mustafa al-Adawi is one of the students of Sheikh Mugbil ibn Hadi al-Wadi'i rahimahullah ta'ala. Uh, then we have the narration Mahdi from the Household of Prophet Muhammad Sasa. We already mentioned this hadith. This, the next hadith is reported by Imam Abu Dawud in his Sunan. An Ali ibn Abi Talib, radiallahu anhu. An in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal, Lau lam yabqa min ad-dahri illa yawmun, La ba'atha Allahu rajulan min ahli bayti, Yamla'uha adlan kama muli'at jawran. Okay. The narration or the translation of which is and the hadith is authenticated by Imam al-Albani and also Sheikh Ahmed Shakir, the muhaddith of Misr, Egypt, from Egypt, rahimahullah ta'ala and others. Ali ibn Abi Talib reported the Prophet said, even if only one day of the time of this world remained, even there was just one day left, Allah would raise up a man from my household who would fill up this earth with justice as it had been filled with oppression. How after this narration somebody will come and say that I don't have to believe in Al-Mahdi because the hadith of Mahdi is not found in Bukhari and Muslim. How is it possible? We have this hadith in Sunan Abi Dawood. Abu Dawood is from the, the students of Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal, rahimahullah ta'ala. From the generation of that generation who basically compiled the hadith of the Prophet Sassim in their Sahih, in their Sunan and so on and so forth. And this hadith has been accepted by ulama of the hadith generation after generation. How a person who writes a book and he becomes famous and everybody just goes and follows him and says that, oh, we don't have to because it's not in Bukhari and Muslim. Even if it is not in Bukhari and Muslim. And we know now that it is in Bukhari and Muslim. Not with the name, but the narration is there. The narration is there. Uh, the Prophet Sallallahu said, Al-Mahdiyu min waladi Fatima bint Muhammadu. Mahdi will be from the children of Fatima. So uh, we know that Ali ibn Abi Talib anhu married other women after Fatima radiallahu anha. But it will not be from those lineage. It will be from the lineage of Fatima. Lineage of Fatima radiallahu anha. And the hadith is reported by Imam Abu Dawud in his Sunan on the authority of Musalama radiallahu anha. This is one of the mothers of the believers, wives of the Prophet Sassam. Qalat, Sameetu Rasul Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqul Al Mahdiyu min Etrati. Al Mahdi is from my Etra, meaning from my family, min Waladi Fatima, from the children of Fatima. And this hadith had been authenticated by Imam al Albani. He said, Ha wa hada isnaduhu jayyid. And another place he said, Hada isnaduhu sahih. The hadith is, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, authentic. Um, then the Prophet also said, Yuwati'u ismuhu ismi. Wa ismu abihi ismu abi. That his name will be like my name and his father's name will be like my father's name. We mentioned that there is nothing else other than this. So the, the, the common conception is his mother's name will be Abdullah and his mother's father's name will be Abdullah and his mother's name will be Amina. Mother's name we have no idea. 
But father's name is we know for sure Abdullah. For sure. And this hadith also reported by Imam Abu Dawud in his Sunan, authenticated by Imam Al Albani, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, and other muhaddithun, uh, including Imam Mukbil ibn Hadi al Wadi'i, and Al Shirk al Adawi, he mentions in his, uh, his Musnad al Sahih, uh, Min Ashrati Sa'a. And Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, radiallahu anhu. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, one of the Kibaril uh, ulama from the uh, as Sahaba. And in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Law lam yabuqa min al dunya illa yawmun. Ha? Uh, قال زائدة في حديثه لطول الله ذلك اليوم حتى يبعث فيه رجلا مني أو من أهل بيتي يواطئ اسمه اسمي واسم أبيه اسم أبي زاد في حديث فطر في حديث فطر يملأ الأرض قسطا وعدلا كما ملئ الظلما وجورا هذا نريشن لا تذهب أو لا تنقضي الدنيا حتى يملك العرب رجل من أهل بيتي يواطئ اسمه اسمي. All of these narrations are alhamdulillah rabbil alamin authentic. Abdullah ibn Masood reported the Prophet said, even if only one day of this world remained, Allah would lengthen that day until He raised up in it a man from my etra, from my offspring or my family. Whose name is the same as my name, and his father's name is the same as my father's name, who will fill the earth with equity and justice, as it had been filled with oppression and tyranny. In another narration, the world will not come to pass before the Arabs are ruled by a man of my family whose name will be the same as my name. So we believe in Day of Judgment, and we don't want to believe in the signs of the Day of Judgment. أَفَتُؤْمِنُونَ بِبَعْدِ الْكِتَابِ وَتَكْفُرُونَ بِبَعْدِ Are we going to compartmentalize the Quran and Sunnah? A portion we believe, a portion we don't believe. So we believe in the Day of Judgment, but we don't want to believe in the Asharati Sa'a. How come? The only solution to all of these confusion that we have heard in the beginning of the class is by learning the Sunnah of the Prophet and believing in it and calling to it. Alhamdulillah, the solution is very simple, not complicated. Sifatul Mahdi al Khilqiya. Al Mahdi's physical characteristics. Rawahu Imam Abu Dawud fi Sunanihi. Wal Hadithu Sahahahu Imam al Albani wa Sheikh Shu'ayb al Arnaud. Rahimahullah ta'ala. And Abu Sa'id al Khudri radiallahu anhu. On the authority of Abu Sa'id al Khudri radiallahu anhu. In the Sunan of Abu Dawud, Imam Abu Dawud, a Sijistani. قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم المهدي مني المهدي is from me meaning from his family أجل الجبهة أجل الجبهة means his forehead is wide so maybe his hair line is a little bit you know up here Allah wa'alam but the forehead is wide okay أقنى الأنف أقنى الأنف means the nose is thin and as we mentioned there's a bump here يملأ الأرض and these are mentioned in the books of the Nihaya of Imam Ibn Athir you know the books where they speak about gharaib al hadith the the wordings which are very unique and very very uh, not used very commonly those narrations are uh, uh, explained by the ulama uh, those who go to the books of the lugha and so on and so forth and they define what these things mean yamla'ul arda qistan wa adla he will fill the earth with with uh, uh, with uh, uh, equity and justice kama muli ajawran wa dhulma يَمْلِكُ سَبْعَ سِنِينَ After it will be filled with oppression and tyranny and he will rule for seven years. Now this edition seven years, Sheikh Shu'aib al-Arna'ut and his group, they say this edition is not authentic. However, we have other authentic narration to show the mudda or the period that al-Mahdi will stay, which is seven to eight years, as you will see. يُسْلِحُ اللَّهُ فِي لَيْلَى Allah will amend Al-Mahdi, prepare Al-Mahdi, correct Al-Mahdi in a single night after he was not guided. So he was not will, will be guided in the beginning, Allah will guide him. And this will happen in one night. The hadith is reported by Imam Ibn Majah. Qala al-Albani fal isnaduhu hasan. Imam al-Albani, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said isnad is hasan. 
uh, and also this has been authenticated by Sheikh Muqbil ibn Hadi al-Wadi'i rahimahullah. rahimahullah. And Ali ibn Abi Talib radiyallahu anhu qala qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam al-Mahdiyu minna ahla baytin. Al-Mahdi is from amongst us, from the Ahli Bayt, the people of the house of the, fa the family of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi This is the shahid. Yuslihuhu Allahu fi layla. Allah will correct him. Allah will amend him. Allah will, uh, 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 you know, purify him. Whatever you, like, you know, uh, uh, make him good in one night. Qawluhu yuslihu Allahu fi layla. It explained, Yuslihuhu Allahu fi laylatin wahidatin ay yatubu alayhi wa yuwafiquhu wa yulhimuhu rushdahu ba'da an lam yakun kathalik. Ibn Kathir, he said, this means it, that Allah guides him to repentance, sets him straight, and makes him wise after he was not. Meaning, referring to Al-Mahdi. Ar-Rakha'u fi zaman al-Mahdi wa buddatu baqa'ihi. The ease of living and prosperity during the administration of al-Mahdi and its extent. And its extent. And this hadith is reported by uh, 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 Imam al-Hakim in his Mustadrak um, and authenticated by Imam al-Albani in al-Sahihah. In Silsilat al-Hadith al-Sahihah. Uh, uh, on the authority of Abu Sa'id al-Khudri. Qala an Abu Sa'id al-Khudri anhu anna Rasul Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qal yakhruju fi akhiri ummati al-Mahdiyu yaskihi allahu yaskihi allahu al-Ghaitha wa tukhriju al-Ardu nabataha wa yu'ti al-Mal sihahan wa takthuru al-Mashiyatu wa ta'zumu al-Ummatu وَيَعِيشُ سَبْعًا أَوْ ثَمَانِيًا يَعْنِي حِجَجًا The narration says that the Prophet ﷺ said, Al-Mahdi will emerge amongst the later generation of my nation. During this time, Allah will send down the rain for him. Rain for him. The earth will yield its vegetation. He will distribute the wealth equally. The livestock will be in abundance, the nation will become great, and he will live for seven to eight years. Meaning his Khilafah or his rulership will be for seven to eight. When it starts, actually, when exactly it ends, because we know that he will witness his Abdu Maryam and so on and so forth. Uh, we do not know. But these are the narrations that are there. Al Mahdi will be amongst those who will support Prophet Isa Abdu Maryam. Rawahu Imam Abu Dawud in his Sunan wa sahahahu Shaykhun al Wadi'i, Imam al Wadi'i, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, Mugbil ibn Hadi al Wadi'i, he authenticated this in his Jami as Sahih. An Imran ibn Hussein, Radiallahu anhu, Kala Kala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, La tazalu ta'ifatum min ummati, yukatiluna ala al haqti, zahirina ala man nawa'ahum. Hatta yuqatila akhiruhum al masihat dajjal. In another narration, La tazalu ta'ifatum min ummati ala al haqqi zahirina ala man nawa'ahum hatta yaati amrullah wa yanzilu Isa ibn Maryam. The reason this narration definitely uh, is connected to Mahdi is because of the additional information there. As you can see, this narration does not mention Mahdi. But let me translate this to you more or less. Imran ibn Hussein narrated that the Messenger وسلم, said, this is the version in Sunan Abi Dawood, a section of my ummah will continue to fight for the truth and overcome their opponents until the last of them fights against Isa ibn Maryam. We know that that will happen in the time of Mahdi and Dajjal. Sorry, Mahdi and Isa. So that's why it is related to Al-Mahdi for sure. The, 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 the edition of Mustad Imam Ahmed or the version of Mustad Imam Ahmed which is also authentic says a group of my ummah will always remain following the truth and continue to be victorious against their opponents until Allah's command is executed and Isa ibn Maryam descends. So this is the proof that we have to say clearly that these narrations are referring to also 
Al Mahdi, because Al Mahdi will be at that time their leader, the leader of the Ta'ifatul Mansura, the ones who will aid Sayyidina Isa sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam against Adajjal. Before we finish, a um, lot of people they say, they bring this question, they say that we know that when Dajjal will be there, there will be a lot of problem. There will be a lot of fitna. Uh, Allah will test the believers with hunger and famine and so on and so forth. And then we have the narration of Al-Mahdi which says that there will be a lot of goodness. So they find a contradiction. And some of the people, they use this contradiction to deny Al-Mahdi. But actually there is no contradiction. First of all because Al-Mahdi, when the Prophet Sassam mentions as we have seen, his rulership will bring justice and goodness. But that does not mean that there will be no fitna. And the ulama explain this. They say, it, and Imam uh, Sheikh uh, uh, Abdul Mawasin al Abbad he mentions this in his book, in this re, uh, in his research. He says that didn't the Prophet Sallallahu and the Sahabi uh, Khulafa Rashid Abu Bakr, Omar, Uthman, Ali didn't they fill the earth with justice? Didn't they fill up the earth with light? For sure. But with all of this in their time, was there no fitna? For for sure there was fitna. For sure there was fitna. For sure there were problems. So similarly we understand the the story of Al Mahdi. There is no contradiction whatsoever. We understand that Al Mahdi will fill things with justice. Why? Because the definition of justice is Kitab and Sunnah. Not necessarily a lot of wealth, always. And we understand that at some point, yes, there'll be test in this Ummah. There'll be test with Jajjal and so on and so forth. But in general, his leadership will be full of goodness. Why? Because he dealt with Kitab and Sunnah. And we know for sure also that as a result of this goodness, at one point there will be a lot of wealth, a lot of rain, a lot of vegetation, a lot of wealth which will be distributed justly amongst the people. So there is no contradiction between the Hadith of Al-Mahdi and the incidents that are mentioned when we are talking about a Dajjal, no contradiction whatsoever. Then this question is being asked that didn't we don't we know from the authentic hadith that when Prophet Isa ibn Maryam will come and when Dajjal will be killed, the believers will come to say that Isa ibn Maryam he will anoint their face and will tell them the grade of paradise. Will Mahdi be one of them? Those narrations in Sahih Muslim, the narration of Nawaz ibn Sam'an radiallahu anhu, which talks about Prophet Isa ibn Maryam anointing the face of the believers at that time and telling them the grade of the paradise, authentic. However, those narrations do not mention Al-Mahdi. So we do not know. Most likely he will be one of them. Most likely. But for us to claim something about the matter of unseen, we must have clear proof. So we keep these narrations as it comes to us and that's what we see our muhaddithun. Our scholars, they do. When they talk about the Nuzul Isa, they have the narrations talking about Nuzul Isa. When they talk about Mahdi, these are the narrations that I mentioned to you, is talked about Mahdi. There is nothing else authentic with regards to him clearly. Nothing else authentic. Yes, there are narrations of Dajjal, the narration of Nuzul of Isa ibn Maryam, that has details and that will happen, we know for sure in his time. But how he will be related to those incidences exactly? Allahu Alam. We know that he will be there, he will be the leader, and so on and so forth. So we leave the matter of the unseen, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he talks about the matter of unseen, he just gives us some glimpses. Those glimpses is not enough for us to claim something, for sure. We cannot do that unless we have clear proof and evidence from the book of Allah and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Uh, it is actually, uh, the time is way up, so I don't have the time to talk about the hadith which some people they use to attribute to Sayyidina Mahdi alayhi salam. And the discussion is a lot, maybe in future we will talk about this and benefit from this hadith of our mother Aisha radiallahu in Sahih Muslim that I was going to mention. But since the time is short, let me just summarize uh, about Al-Mahdi. As we have seen my brothers and sisters, the hadith of Al-Mahdi is reported by more than uh, uh, near to eight companions of the Prophet Sallallahu authentically reported from them. There is uh, 36 plus 
scholars, they have mentioned the hadith of Mahdi in their books of Sunan and Masanid. And these are the umda or the pillars of this religion, the textbooks of this religion. Then there are scholars who have, from the past until today, many scholars they have claimed that the hadith of Mahdi is mutawatir. And then we know that Al-Mahdi is just a normal human being. Well, he will be born in the family of the Prophet ﷺ. His name will match the name of our Prophet. His father's name will match the name of our Prophet's father. And he will be prepared in one night by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he will lead the Muslims. And the Muslims will be, that the earth will be filled with justice and equity. And there will be a lot of goodness that will follow in his time. He will be the one who will be the leader of the Ta'ifatul Mansura, the victorious sect, amongst whom Sayyidina Isa ibn Maryam will be sent down. And that rightly guided group will support Isa ibn Maryam to kill Dajjal. And this is what we have with regards to Al-Mahdi. His physical description, we don't have much, except that his forehead is white and his nose is thin and with a bump over here if you understand the narration to be like that however here is a point that we want to mention we do not need to have a description of these great personalities why because the faith of the muslims the true faith in the quran and the sunnah will make them recognize these personalities the faith will guide us to recognize isa ibn maryam mahdi alayhi salam Dajjal, Yajuj Ma'juj, the truth and falsehood, we will be only be able to recognize if we have the faith in the Kitab and the Sunnah of the Prophet in the right way. Mahdi is not a supernatural creation. Mahdi is a human being. Mahdi is not better than the Sahaba. Al-Mahdi is not better than Sayyidina Isa ibn Maryam, but he is one of the Mujaddid, a, re a reviver, and a, a follower of the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That is why he is a rightly guided man. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa tubu ilaik. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.